Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, I will talk about if I actually use Jetpack Compose in production and if you should do that as well or if you shouldn't do that. So you will find out, do I use that in client projects? Do I use that in apps that I plan to publish in the Play Store? Or if I don't do that and why? So overall, Jetpack Compose is not stable yet. It is still only available for Android Studio Canary. Um, but that will change in this month, so in uh, July 2021. But so far, I have played around with it and built projects with it for about two months. And I have to say, it runs really, really stable. I have literally encountered zero weird issues or bugs with Jetpack Compose. In my opinion, it is a lot, a lot better than XML, especially if it comes to things like um, customizing your layout and your UI. So just things like giving a button a border or giving a button a shadow, that is so much easier in Compose than with XML where you always needed to create some uh, drawable resources. Sometimes you needed to change uh, the, the um, styles.xml file. Sometimes that was only possible with a custom view. In Jetpack Compose, these things are so much easier because you just have these modifiers for every single composable and you can just apply the same styles to every single composable with these. But I personally wouldn't and I personally don't use it in production yet. There are two reasons for that. On the one hand, there are just things that you, you like to do in pretty much every project that you can't easily do yet with Compose. Let me give you an example and that is list animations. So you know that you have a recycler view, you use diffutil and diffutil automatically animates changes in your list. In Jetpack Compose, that is not possible. I mean, it is, it is possible, but you have to manually create these animations. And it is just very likely that Google will also give Jetpack Compose a similar thing as DivUtil, so we can also easily create these animations for our lists. And this is just one example. There, there are multiple, but overall, there are just a lot of things that I think Google will make a lot simpler in future, but right now they are very hard to do. Also another point is in regards to third party libraries, there are not many for Jetpack Compose yet. And those libraries that already exist are often still in alpha because Jetpack Compose is just so new. For example, the, the paging library for Jetpack Compose or the, the navigation library for Jetpack Compose, these are still in alpha. and. I'm always careful with using alpha libraries in production because these tend to change so often and so frequently. And finally, what I also find an issue is that we have to use it with Canary. Of course, this will change this month, so this point will only be valid as long as it's not stable yet. But Android Studio Canary has so many weird version issues, um, like I, I can't run Jetpack Compose projects with a Compose version less than beta 0.9, I think. So your Canary version must be the same as your Compose version or somewhat compatible. And with a stable version, you don't have that because you know it, it will run. And I've especially tried around with KMM, Kotlin Multiplatform. And for that, there are even more version issues because we have to use Canary. Then we have these iOS dependencies. We have the Android dependencies. And that really makes it a pain to, to deal with if we have to use Android Studio Canary. So what I can recommend is definitely learn it now because nothing speaks against learning. It is It totally makes sense to just get familiar with the Compose API, how it works, to, to just get a feeling for how this new approach of designing UI works, this declarative UI approach. But before you actually use that in a production app, in, a, in an app that you publish on Play Store, I would at, at least try it out in one of your personal side projects. So maybe make, I don't know, a little social network with Jetpack Compose and see if you actually encounter any issues, if you encounter any things that Compose doesn't offer yet, but you would like to have. But if you feel like, hey, this is really cool and I find this easier than XML, then feel free to use it in production as soon as it's stable. So overall, my opinion is, Jetpack Compose gives an excellent platform for making great UI, but it just takes a little, little bit of time until it's, it, it reaches the, the level of possibilities we already have with XML. And just things like 
that it um, that there are a lot of libraries that support it, that the libraries also move to the stable state. But that is, of course, not an issue of Compose. That is just due to the fact that it's not so popular. Or it's just so new. There needs to be some time to develop these libraries and these um, extensions of the Compose API. That is a lot of work. And Google is, I think, already pushing forward really hard to, to publish it and make it stable. Also, I hope there are some new changes for the stable version, so new composables maybe, or just things that make it easier for us to, to do common stuff. If you like this video and if you want to learn more and advanced Android concepts, check out the first link in this video's description, which will lead you to my website and they will find premium courses, which will boost your Android knowledge to the next level and these are also a brilliant way to support me and my work. Apart from that, I wish you an excellent day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.